Okay, now that we understand uh, some applications of derivatives, let's get into some really neat applications involving optimization. Optimization is, is where you have a relationship between an independent variable and a dependent variable, and you can actually find the value of the independent variable that maximizes that dependent variable. Now there's there's business applications of this, there's medical applications of these things, and there's scientific applications of these things. So we're, we're going to focus on a little bit of each. Okay, so let's look at some simple optimization problems. Okay, so these problems will only have a primary equation of a single independent variable. So right now I wanted to start you out with with some problems where you're actually um, either given the function or the function can easily be determined so that you can optimize the function. So let's look at number one. It says the price of a certain computer system decreases immediately after its introduction and then increases. If the price P is estimated by the formula P equals 160T squared minus 1800T plus 6200, where T is the time in months from its introduction, find the time until the minimum price is reached. Okay, so what we want to do is determine the minimum price. Well, we know the function, so we learned earlier that we can find extrema of this function by using the derivative. So if I take the derivative of this function, the derivative with respect to t is 320t minus 1800. And then if I set that equal to zero, I can actually solve this by simply adding 1800 to both sides and dividing by 320 and I got t equals 5.6 months. So basically at 5.6 months the minimum price is reached and then after that it begins to increase. So now I guess I should mention that just because t equals 5.6 is a critical number it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to give us a minimum so let's make sure we check that. So if we check the second derivative, um, the second derivative actually gives me 320. Well, 320 is always a positive number, so we're going to get a minimum based on the second derivative test. And it, you probably already knew that because this was a parabola. Um, this is a parabola that opens upward, so it, it can only have a minimum and no maximum. All right, let's look at number two. If the price charged for a candy bar is P of X cents, so in other words, we're not going to give you a fixed price. The price is going to be based on the number of thousands of candy bars. So it's going to be based on X, where X represents the number of thousands of candy bars sold. So this price is given as $14 minus X over 12. So so actually, I'm sorry, 14 cents minus x over 12. So actually, if you, just to give you a little perspective here, suppose we sold 12,000 candy bars. Well, if we sold 12,000 candy bars, you could plug 12 in here and see that the price of each candy bar would be 13 cents. Or if you plugged uh, 24,000 in here, you get 14 minus 2, so the price of each candy bar would be 12 cents and so forth. So the, the price of the candy bar um, actually depends on the number of thousands of candy bars we sell. The more you sell, the cheaper you can buy them. So at, under this formula, how many candy bars must be sold to maximize revenue? Well, to calculate the revenue, you're going to actually have to find the number of candy bars sold times the, the price of each candy bar. But the price of the candy bar is actually variable based on this function. So let's replace P with this function 14 minus X over 12 and we get X times 14 minus X over 12. And now if we multiply that together get 14 X minus 1 12th X squared. 
So to maximize that, we're going to take the derivative. So the derivative of that function would be 14 minus 1 6 x. Now, if you find the critical numbers of this derivative by setting it equal to 0, you'll get x equal 84. Basically, you just um, subtract 14 from both sides and then multiply both sides by negative 6, and that will give you 84. And, uh, basic, and if you found the second derivative, you'd find that the second derivative is always negative, so this would have to give us a maximum. Now, in this problem, I didn't actually give you the max. If you want to know the maximum uh, revenue, you actually have to plug the, the 84 back into this function for x to get the maximum revenue. And the same thing up here. If you want to know the minimum price, you have to actually plug 5.6 into the function. Okay, so number 3 says we, we're given this function where x has a specified domain it can only go from 4 to 20 it's an approximation to the number of salmon swimming upstream to spawn x represents the water temperature in degrees celsius find the temperature that produces the maximum number of salmon okay so since we're given the function that represents the number of salmon let's just take the first derivative so that's going to be minus 3x squared plus 12x plus 288 I'm going to set that equal to 0, and then to solve that, I can factor negative 3 out, and inside the parentheses, I get x squared minus 4x minus 96, and that will actually factor into x minus 12, x plus 8. So I get two answers. One would be x equal 12 degrees Celsius, and the other would be negative 8 degrees Celsius, but remember, negative 8 degrees Celsius is not in our domain. Now, I didn't actually... Uh, test this but you know how to test this using the second derivative test so the second derivative is actually minus 6x plus 12 and if you plug 12 into this you're going to get a negative value for the second derivative remember when the critical number gives you a negative value you know you achieve a maximum and even though negative 8 is not in the uh, domain of this function uh, if you plug negative 8 you would see that negative 8 would give you a, a minimum but the answer is 12 degrees Celsius will maximize the number of salmon that can swim upstream. Okay, so here's a practice problem that you can work on. And again, I've given you the function, and you just have to find the processor speed for which cost is at a minimum. Okay, so for other, other optimization problems, we might require a secondary equation so that we can eliminate a variable from the primary equation. So let's look at some guidelines. In order to solve optimization problems, number one, identify all given quantities and all quantities to be determined, and you can draw a sketch if you need it. And then you want to determine a primary equation. This is the equation that you want to be optimized. So whatever you're looking for the, the minimum or maximum for, that would be that equation. And then look for a secondary equation. And the secondary equation can be used to eliminate one of the independent variables from the primary equation. And then from that, determine the feasible domain, if there are any limits on it, and then determine the desired results. Okay, now we already did one pretty much exactly like this, but let me show you basically in terms of the guidelines. Basically, the primary equation was this, revenue. We wanted to maximize revenue. But revenue had two independent variables, x and p. But fortunately, we had a way to eliminate the variable p by replacing it with 82 minus x over 20. And then that gave us 82x minus x squared over 20. And then um, you take the derivative of that, which is 82 minus uh, x over 10, set it equal to 0, and you get x equal 820 or 820,000. And then you can verify that with a the second derivative test, that that gives a maximum. Um, now, again, I didn't spend much time on this one because it's very much like one we did a minute ago. Now, on the rest of the problems, I'm going to leave it up to you to verify whether the value yields the desired result, and that result being a maximum or minimum. So generally, 
I don't ask you to find a maximum unless there exists a maximum or a minimum unless there exists a minimum. But, you know, it doesn't hurt to be safe. Okay, let's look at this problem. You've got a box that's made from a 20 inch by 20 inch piece of cardboard. So basically this is 20 inches from here to here and it's also 20 inches from here to here. And we're going to cut these little squares, which I've denoted by little red squares. Uh, we're going to cut squares from each corner of the box, and then we're going to turn the sides of the box up. And what we want to do is we want to figure out what dimensions we should cut out of these little squares so that we maximize the volume of the box. Well, if you look at the box, after the box is created, it's going to look like this. So I'm going to let X be the dimension of these little squares. So I'm going to cut out an X by X square out of each corner. Now, if, if, I, if I take away X here and take away X here, you see the black square in the middle. That's going to be the base of my box. So if, I, if, if the dimensions are 20 from corner to corner, then once I take away X from both sides, I'm going to have dimensions of 20 minus 2X for both the uh, for each of the sides so therefore I can get the um, dimension of the base of the box the base of the box is going to be 20 minus 2x by 20 minus 2x now here's where it might get a little strange but remember this dimension right here this dimension right here is x and we're going to flip that up after we cut the corners out to give us the height so the height of the box is going to be x. So now if we multiply these two binomials together, we get 400 minus 80x plus 4x squared, and then we multiply that by x, and so we get 4x cubed minus 80x squared plus 400. So basically, my, it, if you want to think about it, my primary equation um, was actually... Um, you know, length times width times height of this box, but the length and the width are both 20 minus 2x, and the height is the x. So I really didn't have to fool with a secondary equation. So now if I take the derivative of this volume, I get 12x squared minus 160x plus 400 equals 0. Now, you can solve this actually by uh, the quadratic formula or by factoring. So the answers are actually x equal 10, if you solve that, or x equal 3 and 1 third. Well, the answer can't be 10, because if this box is only 20 inches across, then if you cut out a 10 by 10 corner here, and then also one on this side, and then cut out one down here and one down here, you basically cut the, cut the entire box away. So 10 would... Um, would not work. So the answer must be that you must cut corners out that are three and a third inches. So each corner must be three and a third inch by three and a third inch in order to maximize the volume of that box. Now again, I, I was just asked to find what size the corner needs to be to cut out to find the maximize the volume. Now that doesn't give me the actual maximum volume. If you want the maximum volume, you have to go back up in here into um, actually here into the volume function and you would have to replace x with three and one third inches um, if you plug in a decimal you know take the decimal out to several places like maybe three points at least three decimals 3.333 and that'll probably give you a close enough answer uh, i'll finish the next examples from this section on the next video